Yo, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number two number of the two. podcast. What's up, what's up, what you was going what's on? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to episode two. I'm so happy that you're around. We're here with at Shop Simply Sue, straight out of Virginia. Straight out the B, straight out the <laughs> F. Did you have a good Valentine's Day? We didn't even talk about that. Valentine's Day was yesterday. Uh, yeah, well... No, I didn't do anything <laughs> for a reason because of distance, I guess, because of distance, but that's a whole nother topic. How about your Valentine's Day? Yesterday was cool. Yesterday was cool. Um, we had a sold out event yesterday, so that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Valentine's Day was amazing. That's amazing. Oh, so I wrote, I've been watching um just i've been re-watching insecure um i watched it a couple years ago up to like season three and i just restarted watching the entire well, is that word? And i just started watching it again from season one and i wrote a poem that's exciting and i want to start off by reading you guys this poem so the name of the poem is called <clears throat> get out of the should and live in the could what i think i deserve need and crave to accept less equals failure those are the thoughts encompassing my brain every second of every day attempting to uphold my personal image to remove the layers of wisdom lust and beauty the ability to show the real me raw and uncut beauty internally divine and perfectly perfectly flawed the mind's a crazy place. Get out of the should and live in the could. And that's an ode to Molly's therapist on Insecure. <laughs> I think that's from like season two or season three. But it definitely struck a nerve with your girl. Deep, so. deep, get deep, sister. <laughs> so anybody out there that's living in what they should, focus on what you have and how you can attain it with some tangible goals and a plan. You can never be mad at somebody that has a plan. Most definitely got to have a plan. Yeah, definitely. So, moving right along into what we're going to be doing today. Today, everybody's in for a treat on the No Fly Zone podcast. So, the first thing that we're going to go over is Super Bowl Sunday. Jameer is going to let us know about the Super Bowl uh, events that he thought were most notable. And then we'll get into the Bill Cosby case. We haven't talked about that in a while. It's definitely something that people are um, talking about in smaller circles. I know the world loves Bill Cosby. I love the Cosby show. You know, that's definitely an attribution to American history as we know it. The professional black family on TV, um, impactful. Um, but we have to know that there is a difference between the man and the character. <laughs> We're gonna wrap things up this evening with uh, Shikari Richardson and Camilla Baliba, the Russian skater. And we're going to finish things up with that. So you guys are definitely in for a treat today. Get ready, because I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing. So we're in the no-fly zone. Nothing's going to get past us. We're going to touch on those uncomfortable topics, and we're going to see how you guys feel about it. Most definitely. So Most before definitely. we get started, we did have... Um, a grief yesterday on Valentine's Day. Uh, Tyrese Gibson's grandmother passed away. And that's just, that's very sad. So we want to wish our condolences on Tyrese. And we're going to give you guys this clip here. Uh, TSR says, Tyrese's mother, mother, my apologies, Priscilla Murray Gibson has passed away due to multiple health complications. So Tyrese, you are forever in our prayers. 
definitely do hope that you are able to grieve through this in your own manner and that you're able to cope successfully and be able to and just be able to not necessarily move past it but be able to exist again most definitely most definitely man shout out um family the condolences you know yeah family prayers anything like that yeah so on to some i don't know say a little bit more exciting you know but it was some speculation that the nfl had forbid Eminem not to kneel during the halftime performance so we have a little clarification on that issue dr dre has come out and said the nfl had no problem with Eminem dealing during the Super Bowl after. So, you know how black people get on social media, or, you know, I ain't got to say black people, but you, you know how we love our guys. <laughs> you know, you know, like straight up, big fat, no cap. And uh, so it was going around, I heard it, and now uh, they're saying, yeah, the NFL has said that told them not to do it, and all this and all that. But he had came out and said, that look, you had no problem. What is what, what I'm doing? It M gonna be M, basically, and uh, you know he is what he is. Um, and he, I, I don't I don't really find a, a, a problem. Oh, speak up, buddy. My volume kind of low. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Is, is that good? But yeah. Anyway, um, the Super Bowl Fifty Six halftime show featured Dr. Dre, Eminem, Snoop Dogg. Kendrick Lamar and Mary J. Blige received high praise on social media. As many viewers called it the best performance in the event's history. The hip hop heavyweights didn't escape the stage without a little bit of controversy. Before Sunday's game between the Bengals and Rams, Puck News' Eric Gardner reported the NFL nixed a plan by Eminem to kneel in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick in social justice. The 49 year old rapper did end up kneeling during the show, but NFL spokesperson Brian McCarthy told MMOB's Albert Breer that the enormous noted the lead had watched numerous rehearsals. Uh, in a TMZ Live interview, Dr. Dre cleared up the controversy. The longtime producer revealed NFL asked for small tweaks to the show. The Eminem kneeling was not one of them. Mm. There were a few things that changed, but it was like really minor things, Dr. Dre said. M taking a knee, that was M doing that on his own. There was no problem with that. So obviously it wasn't a big of a deal as it was going around on the World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. Simple minor tweaks were asked, but nothing major like telling Eminem not the deal doing the performance. Yeah. So that was just a little clarification on that topic. That's so, powerful and impactful. Eminem has he has a voice. <laughs> that's how it works his mouth itself. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that was it. You know, I didn't really you know what actually I thought it was a good game. Mm -hmm. Glad for Matthew Stafford, former Detroit Lion here in Detroit. Can't root for the team, mm -hmm. but I root for a former player that got a marine. Shout out to Matthew Stafford. <laughs> yeah, give him a second. Give him a second. <laughs> Shout out to Matthew Stafford. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, so we do. Yes, I saw the Super Bowl in bits and pieces. I was I was moving around doing a lot of stuff, but I am excited. That I saw a lot of smiling faces afterwards. So you know, I can't be mad at that. We do have a product merchandise highlight. Yay, yay, yay. Go ahead yes. and show it off. Exciting. Shout them out. This here <laughs> is a uh, scented candle named Pink Lemonade from Lily Stoners based out of Houston, Texas. These have it's crystals good. in them. I have to try to open it. Okay. Um, and they have good vibe crystals in the candles, if you guys can see that there. 
So make sure that you check out www.lilystoners.com. The Lily Stoner store. Make sure you tell her that Simply Sue sent you. Go ahead and tell them Simply Sue sent you. <laughs> it smells so good. I'm going to light it right now because it smells good. You know, I love scented candles. I have some as well, but this pink lemonade smells really good. And it lights easily. Boom. Well, is that a little design in there? Is that a little design? Oh, yeah. It's got, well, it's got glitter and it's got some good crystal stones in it. Okay. So, okay. it's definitely, yeah. Chris, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to them. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to them. Yeah, you know what I got me? You know what I just ordered though? You know what I what just you, ordered? I ordered me a, a cricket machine. <gasps> did you get the explorer or did you get the um the air? Because I have a cricket too. I got the explorer air. Okay, two. that's two. Oh, we got the same one. Mine is turquoise. What color is yours? Mine, mine about to go ahead and be the mint green. <laughs> this is the mint okay, green. So that means we got some merch coming soon. <laughs> I use uh there we go. Smith's Landscape Landscaping about to be in every city this summer. Hello, shout out to Smith's Landscaping in Petersburg, Virginia. There you go. Go ahead. We gonna go ahead and uh, <laughs> give them a round of applause out there. Smith's Landscaping out there in Petersburg, Virginia. You know, mm -hmm. Shout out. But yeah, um, yeah, like I was saying, get me get get into the little crash. You know what I'm saying? Do a little a little side business going on. You know? Do something. <laughs> So, yeah. so moving into our next topic i want to let you guys in with a trailer we want to talk about bill cosby so is bill cosby a rapist or is bill cosby america's sweetheart what do you guys think it is i've been doing a little bit of research and um this is kind of what i came up with let's let this run a lot of people know because you can't do what he did unless you have other people supporting what you're doing. Showtime dropped the official trailer for the upcoming four-part documentary series about Bill Cosby. The project We Need to Talk About Cosby from Emmy winner W. Kamau Bell promises an in-depth look at the revolutionary career and the fall of, quote, America's dad. It's going into America's dad. Let me share this here. I got more information for you guys. I've been looking this up all day. This documentary just dropped about Bill Cosby. And it's just something interesting to me as a people, when someone does something that we don't like, it sometimes it's hard for us to embrace it. And it's hard for us to acknowledge and accept it. But these women have voices and they want to be heard. I am still a fan of the Cosby show because it taught us things that we we didn't see, see or have or didn't have access to. But this is very disheartening to learn these things about Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby was trying to clear a lot. He had his hand on the back of my head. And he was trying to push it towards his penis. Nobody believed you. And who would have believed me? Playmate? I didn't know if he was going to kill me or rape me. Feeling drugged. And him having sex with me. The last thing I remember was Bill Cosby, uh, a patchwork robe, upping its robe and getting on top. Gr grabbing it on my, like on my chest. chest and, you know, f started to try to fondle me. People Magazine believed us, believed me, and that piece then my family dropped me. He grabs me, pulls me like really tight to him, kisses me in the mouth like really, really rough. I remember is being on his couch with uh, him taking my clothes off. I was in a white t-shirt and my panties, and he was looming over me in a white robe. This is affecting me in my house. It's affecting me. <laughs> and it has really affected these women. <laughs> but I'm strong. I'm, I'm gonna stand on my own two feet, and I'm gonna tell my side of the story, and it's not gonna end here. 
quote, Bill drugged me last night, then had sex with me. I don't understand it. It's not like I would have said no to anything. Charlotte, fill this out for me. I, I read your article in Salon, and, and so she was someone who had a consensual relationship with him, so didn't understand why he would drug her. Is that right? Right. I mean, it made no sense to her, and she was um, really pretty, you know, sexually wild, and she was willing to go along with anything, and, you know, it didn't make any sense. Well, I'm still very disturbed. What Bill Cosby. So, um, the truth is out. Bill Cosby has been drugging women for decades. Um, there's even a clip where he's on Larry King in 91 telling them how they put just a little thing in their drink and they just do whatever that you want. Um, I don't know if that's a crime of the times, but it's still a crime. Bill Cosby, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, but you know, I mean, it was kind of rumors out there back then, you know, you know, he kind of got down kind of crazy, you know, it was kind of, you know, so, but what's funny to me is like, why do all these women come out like 30, 40 years later after it was, why not do it now? So, because it only makes it seem like you, you know, just a money grab. I do, I do want to say this because I don't want to, as the spokesperson for all women, uh, Tamar has words as a spokesperson for all women. Comfortability comes with it. You know what I'm saying? If something has happened to you, you may not feel comfortable being that breakout person because you're the one that has to withstand judgment for whatever reason. A woman cries rape. She's also on trial for whatever she has done with her body or how she acts as well. Um, I don't, I wish that people would have come out sooner and maybe they have, you know, you never know the entire story, how much, how much things were swept under the rug or turned a blind eye to, or just people that were not believed. But it happened. It doesn't matter when it came out. It happened. When we should acknowledge that it happened to those women. Tamar Coleman out of Petersburg, Virginia says we also have to consider uh, a lot of people thought Bill was getting to too powerful, especially with him trying to buy CNN, a major news network, when all of this came out. Very true. Um, when there's a lot of money about to be made, secrets are leaked. <laughs> you got skeletons in your closet. You better have enough money to keep them in there. We'll see. That's something I also heard on, on black social media. You know what I'm saying? That Bill Cosby. First, I heard it was CBS. But see, I had looked it up and just because I wanted to be like, man, is, was this really true? Because I be doubting a lot of stuff out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't, I, like I heard it was a rumor. I didn't hear it was true. Yeah. You know about, the, about the news broadcast? Yeah, about him trying to buy, you know what I'm saying, the network. Um, I don't know if he's going to buy the network. Well, he was trying to. to. I I don't, was what, trying what I do know is that he was drugging those women. And let's not lose <laughs> focus on that. <laughs> all right, that all is right, what so did happen. That is so what look, happened. Do you think all of those women got drugged? All of them. Like all of them that's coming out saying. It doesn't matter drugged. if I think all of them did. I know one of them did. And that's all that matters to me. So how about if they was winning? Also, really, nah, that, was, that was the thing back then. Slip a little play little, you know, holla at me in the morning. Even your boy Scarface, you know, he had said it. You know, oh, that was God. the thing. Oh, really? Back then in the 70s, they was all getting high. <laughs> they, was all, they was all partaking. Like you said, they was all partaking. Right I want to show my channel a fascinating interview about 1991. Spanish fly was the thing that all boys uh, at, from age 11 on up to death, <laughs> we will still be searching for Spanish fly. <laughs> right. and, and, and what was the old, the old story was, if you took a little pin. drop, no, it was on the head of a pin. pin. And you put it, it in the drink. Don't matter. It doesn't make it. And the girl would drink it. And she sure. Hello, America. <laughs> so on that clip of Larry King in 1991, Bill Cosby, Larry King <laughs> are joking. Most amazing pictures come out the past few years is E.T. And it's do you a, think? A do you think? Okay. Spanish fly. Hey, look, I ain't gonna lie. Like, 
I was younger. I was younger, right? And uh, I think I was in high school or something. I was, I don't, I was young. And uh, I had seen this stuff, Spanish Fly, in the gas station or something. It was a, it was a gas station or it was somewhere, I think, a novelty store or something. Yeah, I think it was like Spencer's or something. And I was like, man, what is this stuff, man? And they had something. It was it was cola flavored Spanish fly. <laughs> and you were like, I don't know, I don't know if it worked because you know that like then it was like that. Man, I wasn't humping every day. I wasn't getting sick every day. So you know, I just, I just drunk it, you know, just to be like drinking it. And you know, <laughs> Spanish fly. So it had to be something, you know what I'm saying? They had the money, so they had the authentic Spanish fly. Yeah, they had that. You know, it tastes like Ocala. The fact that they were sitting there joking over this on national TV is just hilarious to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we're still talking about, did he do it? The proof is in the pudding. Well, Bill is out. (laughs) Bill is out. He's an old man. I mean, he's an old man. I'm still sympathetic, but it still happened, and he should be. He should have suffered consequences for his actions, as us common folk would have. If it would have been you, you would still be in prison. That's you know a what I'm fact. I'd still be in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> under the jail, probably. Under Janice. the jail, isolation. <laughs> Um, going into news this week, we got some good news to share. Um, somebody, Snoop Dogg, acquired Death Row Records, and that is exciting. So, reading into the article, Snoop Dogg is officially in charge at Death Row Records, reports CNN Entertainment. The announcement that the rapper has acquired the label came last Wednesday. It's a sentimental move considering Death Row Records launched his career in the 90s with his debut album, Doggy Style. Snoop replies, it feels good to have ownership of the label I was part of at the beginning of my career. And as one of the founding members, this is an extremely meaningful moment for me. So good job, Snoop. <laughs> yeah, good job, Snoop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, good job, uh, Snoop. Snoop Dogg and Death Row. Hey, but so you does know, that mean he owns his own masters now? No. Oh, like, no. Do you know oh. Death Row has been bought and sold? like a few times now, like it didn't exchange so many hands. So I think it's more of Snoop owning just the namesake as it is now, not like all the Tupac bad and all, no, no, no. That does probably not made it out of the vault. Well, good job, Snoop. It's definitely a power move. This is Black History going down in Black History Month. So good job, Snoop. <laughs> Currency and the Alchemist have a third album coming out called The Tonight Show, and they dropped an official trailer last week. So tune in. Yeah, yeah. Nigga, the crib got the 12 person stand. Security and the grounds keep her on hand. One of the illest niggas on off land. Ass fault, all soft sand. I've been as fast as the flash of the class and possess. Prefer that water for crystal over your wine glass. This a different bracket. The ones who really have it. This a James Worthy and New Balance. Brand new converse on magic. The guy was on Kurt Rampin. Showtime. Whole Royal Rolls Royce in the first one mine. One of the living legends rep the east side. Shots fired, claim live. Young as abandoned, they G ride. They set that bitch on fire. The bounty on your head was high. Let bit in the cast that bitch in the shine. That shit is shame, but that shit be happening all the time. They don't know how to cry because them boys desensitized. Ambitious and ready to ride. Anxious, ready to slide. Angry in the outside. You hanging out with too high. You gonna get picked like fruit. I'm in New Orleans where the killers got the juice. And some suggestions say it might be best I move, but if I dip, who else gonna bring them spaceships through like I do? My car collection special, Jay Leno of the N.O. Kept every car I ever bought, each of them sentimental. Represent the hard work, each one is a symbol of when I started making real dope for wrecking venues. Smoke session continues, any mind mo and pick something cold to slip up into, I get with you. Uh, uh, uh. 
and keep me eating. Chef is on switch if y'all be smoking weed. I don't post me on your pictures, but you can keep a secret. We can always take it. Baby, rule number one, don't talk about me around your nigga. So we gon' have that nigga suspicious. We hit the switch, don't shove highway dip. Loose lips, sink ships, and my ship ain't sink. I still got my little foot chilling, you know what I'm saying? I don't really like to be around a lot of motherfuckers, you know, I just like the state of myself. That was the hot spin for the week. It doesn't get much hotter than Spitter and Dreddy. <laughs> One time for the life. One time for the life. So in that album, uh, the continuance is dropping this Friday, February 18th on all streaming platforms. So you guys make sure you go click that link on Friday at midnight or Thursday at midnight. How does that work? Uh, like midnight is the next day. So Thursday on midnight is kind of like, like <laughs> it's 11 p.m. Wednesday. And I tell you what, how about this? At eleven fifty nine PM on Thursday, be ready to click that button in the next minute. How about that? Oh well then that's then that go on the Friday. Friday. Okay, well, yeah, there we go then. Friday. That's when it is. That's when it drops. <laughs> um, oh, so we have something that we want to show you guys, and it's so exciting. We have a special, special treat. The No Fly Zone Beauty of the Week. Yay! Um, this doll is beautiful. This here is underscore brown dot Leah. Um, she is a model. The makeup in this photo is done by the Simply Sue Playhouse makeup artist, uh, Naturally Fresh Faces, um, NFF Beauty, Miss Angelique Quinn. So let's give Miss Leah Brown. A nice round of applause. She is the No Fly Zone Podcast Beauty of the Week. There you go. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Got a little bit of jet beauty, <laughs> you know, <laughs> going on. You know what I'm saying? You know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Shout out to Jet Magazine. You know what I'm saying? Been doing it for 50, what is it? 100 years? Uh, it was a long time. A right, long time. <laughs> Jet Mag, but Jet Magazine was amazing though. It had oh, a, yeah. it, was, it was a way to keep up with the culture, the movers and the shakers. I definitely missed that. Um, there you, so what, do you like? Do you actually think it would it would have like the way they were were going? It would have still been successful, like with the magazine, since everything is kind of like online well, now. I look at Jet not necessarily as a magazine, but it's a compilation of, of information. So I think the way things grow, I feel so they, well, I hope they would have been ha smart enough to evolve with the times, you know, go digital and have like podcasts and, you know, just different right. things. Oh, that would have been media. live. That would have been live. Yeah. Jet podcast. You know, podcast. Well, we got something even better now, the No Fly Zone podcast. <laughs> on all streaming platforms, find us on YouTube. Oh. You hit the page on Instagram if you want promo or if you want to be a guest on the podcast. You can definitely reach us on Instagram at No Fly Zone Podcast. And you can watch all episodes, stream them from uh, No Fly Zone Podcast on YouTube. And make sure to like, share, and subscribe. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I the script down, pack. All right, so I am a fan of Shikari Richardson, um, just because she's Black girl magic. Uh, she is, she's smart, she's athletic, she is, she's a woman. Um, and so we want to talk about what's happening with Shikari. So Shikari's not in trouble at this time, but Shikari Richardson, U.S. sprinter, barred from the Olympics for marijuana use, says the only difference between her and Camilla Valiva is their race. And before we get into the before we get into the the thick of the article, what do you think about that, Jameer? Well, <clears throat> how we live in, like the world we live in is not surprising because we see it all the time, uh, a different punishment depending on what race you are. Mm -hmm. So I believe it is not surprising. Uh, it, I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. Like even all the protests and all that. It's just like, you know, it's just not enough of us to convince anybody that we really serious or they should take us 
you know, like for the first place. Yeah. I am proud that Shakari said what she said because immediately when you say something that way, there's always somebody that immediately combats you of, is it really race? You know what I'm saying? Or why do you have to think of it that way? Forget the 400 years of oppression and the oppression that's continuing on today. You know, some people legitimately wonder, you know, why are you reacting that way? And even as a parent, you know, I probably shelter my kids so much, they may think that think that way. And I'm trying now to change that view to where it's more realistic because they're gonna be out here in this world. It's a cold, hard place. So good job, Shakari, for speaking your mind on this one. Um the article when you, hold on, I'm, when you say like when you say stuff like that, like you know how you've been a parent and you're raising your children, like can you imagine like how they have to come up now? Like it's like so different from and it just happened so quickly from when we were coming up to how they're going to come up in the future you know everywhere you got to wear a mask you got to take some covid stuff you got to take some precautions and everything like that like to be a child now coming up like you would never know the, the good that it was in the past like you know it's just like it's amazing you know the kids would never understand how things were but even in the like i grew, i'm born in 1985 so me growing up in the 90s, I played outside, you know what I'm saying? I hung out with my friends. I rode a bike to the store before I've walked to the store. I, have a, I would never let my kids walk anywhere today. They would never know things of that nature, but the world was still crazy. You know what I'm saying? We just didn't have social media or smartphones to capture the moment. Things were still happening. We're more aware of it. We're less, we, we're not sensitized to it. We can see what's actually happening in real time. You know what I'm saying? Something happens, somebody gets their phone, you got a picture of it, like, oh, that's happening right now. It's never stopped happening. And that's what I need to reprogram my mind to think is that this has been happening the entire time. I was just, I was just nurtured. I was just sheltered from it. Um, and that's just that's disheartening. That's a fact. For the most part, I think like now when I wake up, don't you know, like when I was a kid and I woke up, it smelled so, I don't know, just just smell good it smells <laughs> like now yeah. when i wake up the summers don't smell the same the, snow, <laughs> the, the sun's snow, not as bright the snow don't feel the same the, you just can't go out there and make a snow it just like it's just something that's different and then coming out of this pandemic has totally made you think about the past even more and cherish those memories that you had and the people that you lost because in the future you'll never be able to get them back and things will never be the same this pandemic has created a level of separation. It's definitely turned into survival of the fittest. I told you I've been re-watching re Insecure. Niggas was outside. I'm talking about they were getting into Ubers. They were in clubs. They were hanging out with strangers. You know, <laughs> it's just like we were outside. I remember being outside. I would never do those things now. You know what I'm saying? With the pandemic and whatnot. I see people walking down the street. I want to cross to the other side. I'm straight. I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, and, and it's and it's some people out there, man, they don't care if they give it to you or not. You know what I'm saying? They don't care if they give it to you. Now they don't even care if they catch it. See, yeah. How can you tell somebody if they don't care if they catch it, not to, you know, protect others that they be around? Like it don't make no sense. It's, it's it's like the inner struggle you have of if somebody's right to make their own choice about their body, what supersedes their or the interest from someone else, like who puts whose life above, you know what I'm saying? Like True. Both, True. Both, both, both choices are valid. It just sucks that the person that's choosing, you know, not to take the precautions is just exposing more people. It's just, it's hard to contain. It's like, this a, it's- That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> you know, if you got the flu or you got a cold and you go coughing or ha, 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 mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta times that by like 20 or something because it's like, man, it's like, I don't know. COVID was a funny thing because it's like, man, I caught it. Where you catch it from? I don't know. Because it's like, <laughs> it just came from everywhere. I, I started yeah. thinking like, man, is this stuff really like, I don't know, like airborne? Like, it, it is something else. But you know, hey, yeah, I try I, not to get too deep into conspiracy theories. Don't, don't, don't egg me on. <laughs> <laughs> don't egg me on. I mean, we could go down that rabbit hole, but I do know that it does exist and people have been, people have died and people will continue to die. That's so I would encourage everyone um, to stay as safe as possible because I want you to live. That's yeah. no, no other reason than that.
going back to Shakari Richardson and this update. So Shakari Richardson, the American sprinter who was not allowed to compete in the Tokyo Olympics last summer because she smoked marijuana, marijuana after her mother died, said the race seemed to have influenced the decision to allow the Russian figure skater Camilla Beliba to compete in the Beijing Games after she too failed a drug test. So Shakari Richardson goes on to tweet, the only difference I see is I'm a young black lady. And I want to talk about this photo because this photo has nothing to do with the actual conversation or the tweet in general this is the photo that was chosen and this this is an angry black woman photo i don't i don't like the fact that this photo is here i mean i guess it gives off the illusion of what they're trying to say but i don't like the fact that they portrayed shikari this way because she has a valid response when you throw your shoulders up at something you're like what the f it just makes you seem foolish like a cartoon character like you can't express yourself verbally the way normal people express themselves i think that her tweet was well well spoken i think that it was short and brief and i think that it was a great way for her to express her feelings this picture of her holding her arms up like this it's just in poor taste over an already sensitive subject because it's not fair there's an actual double standard um she goes on to say that believa tested positive for the banned drug trimitid trimitazidine a medicine usually usually used to treat angina attacks. Well, listen to this. Can also improve endurance in athletes. So once the news of the failed test surfaced earlier this month, the 15-year-old was suspended from the games, but then later on overturned and was allowed to compete. If she does win a medal, she will not be able to receive the medal until the review is complete. And I just think that's a load of crap. I think that if they should have let my girl run, um, there's nothing we can do about it at this time, but there's a definite double standard. Illegal drugs are illegal drugs when it comes down to a gang or rule. And I think the same rules should be upheld for everybody. No more, no less. That's a fact. You know, I agree with that. You know, the same rules should be upheld for everybody, no matter what the race is. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Hey, what can you do? I mean, if, I don't know. No. I mean, what can you do is you you say something and you let your voice be heard. If the even if nothing happens today or tomorrow, you know the imprint is there. But we're talking about it now. Someone's going to see this and they're going to recognize the injustice, and that alone is doing something, bringing awareness to something that's been con continuing to happen um, and still happens regularly. There's a social injustice. <laughs> I mean, okay, for the most part, if you feel so enraged, I feel you like that's people feel enraged. Martin Luther King, he, he died. How much do you feel that it has changed? Okay, we, it's granted. Some things have changed. You know, some some things have changed. But do you feel that it's changed enough that he would have been like, man, I'm proud? I don't think so. Yeah. And I actually think we took a step back as a people when it comes to this whole, it's like we have selective, uh, <laughs> selective unity. Like we, we pick and choose, we pick and choose what we, we are, you know, going to be united about the Black Lives Matter. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's be, let's be united when the police beat our ass, um, and, and everything like that. When a white person beats our ass or something like that. But when a uh, little doodle get shot around the corner or a little little johnny or you know stevie or whatever like that get, get shot down in the middle of the street where is the big protest at i'm i need yeah. that to yeah. make it solid you feel yeah. me i need that yeah. uh, you know what i'm saying motherfuckers want to rob you they want to take what ain't theirs what you work for you know they feel entitled to it like you don't deserve it like they'll look better in it like it's crazy and people don't need like people don't focus on that part like take a look at a mirror in yourself before you go on a crusade of any social justice talking about what somebody else that did to your people mm -hmm. and look at yourself in the mirror and like are you helping your people at all are you bringing anything to this fight at all yeah a lot of people don't bring anything to the fight i think that everybody has a platform and they should utilize it um i feel as though we have been cultured into thinking, oh, you can't do something you haven't. You know, I definitely started a nonprofit 
last year to mentor youth in the community because something that I felt it was important. I noticed that in my professional career, people were coming in, they were being underprepared for interviews, they didn't know how to prepare a resume, they didn't even know what to wear. Like where is the where is the foundation in coaching for this part? Because this is who the next generation is that they don't have these basic fundamental skills at home and they can't get them at school. The information needs to be gotten from somewhere. So that's my personal, you know what I'm saying, give back to my community because I know it's something that we need. I want to level the educational plan so we can have a somewhat of a balance so that we can start off at the same at least at the same beginning point instead of behind you know it's hard to keep up it's harder to keep up than it is to maintain speed so and that's a fact but but you but you do know right like okay that's cool but i just feel <clears throat> it's a divide somewhere it goes deeper into i just think it's something mental you know, yeah. like, it's like, damn, like, you look at all the other communities and, and, and like, you go to my city, right? You got a Mexican town. Uh, you got a place where the Asians go. Uh, you got to, you know, stuff like that. But we don't have our own. Instead, you have every other nationality open up a business in the heart of our neighborhood. What I've noticed in the Black community that frustrates me personally is, I like you say, a uh, camaraderie almost. It's almost like I'm afraid to give you any information because you're just going to have more than me. It's like we don't have that team type of effort, that familial type of bond for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what it is, but it's just that's something that really frustrates me regularly because I like, you know what I'm saying? For somebody that genuinely likes to help people, especially people that look like you, and to know that when you try to help them, the effort it just isn't going to be matched or, you know what I'm saying? It's just going to be some that you have to be worried about what's who's snaking you or doing this. That It's like, no, it's just... Let's just do what we say we're going to do. <laughs> you know, that's it. That's all I want. That's a fact. It just makes it hard to do business. Like, you know, I I try to hire people of our ethnicity to do things. And nine times out of ten, they're all late. You know what I'm saying? With no appreciation for my time or my money. They late. And they want to tell you. But they, they still want to get paid on time. Or do. they still want. Yeah. It's just you want to tell me what you want to do. With, it's just it's really disheartening the sense of entitlement that we have for things that we haven't put forth any effort for. It's like, we think because we're here, we're entitled to X, Y, and Z. Stop living in the should, you know what I'm saying? And work on your could. Like a million dollars ain't gonna just drop in your lap. You know, some people got this mentality, oh man, you know, man, I'm, I'm just gonna sit here for a minute and uh, you know, it's just gonna happen. Like, no, oh, like with, like somebody miss, like a lot, like a lot, we have, I don't know, man. Like it's kind of even hard to explain. Sometimes you'd be like, damn, really? Like you really think like that's simple? You know what I'm saying? It took it took years, generations for these families to gain that that wealth. You know what I'm saying? That money, you know, that imprint. You yeah. think you're gonna do it over, right? By yeah. yourself. Get out of here. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's cat. yeah, it definitely is. It's really but hopefully we'll be able to change the mentality just through being consistent. You know what I'm saying? I just know that consistency is the key. So all the good people that are out there watching. They need to, you know, stop living in your should and living your could. There you go. That's most definitely. Hey, that's hey, that's a hey, that's a one hundred percent fact. You know what I'm saying? Stop living in your should and living your could. Because no matter what you think you should have or you know you should have did, you know what I'm saying? Do it. You know what I'm saying? Put put an effort. Now I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say oh a fantasy world, you know. If you say you want it, you can do it. I mean, that goes within reason, you know. That goes within, you know, something. But for the, for nine times out of ten, if you really want something, you can get it. Just hard work and effort. Anything, anything that you want, you can get with a plan. You know what I'm saying? Just start there. Get your ideas out of your head. And just write them down you know it just starts somewhere some people are like oh well i don't have this and i can't do that you know even the no fly zone podcast you know what i'm saying i'll talk to you tomorrow let's do it because if we don't start it's not going to get done <laughs> there you go it made it happen boom made it happen there you boom go. here for you like so i just want to tell everybody you can definitely do it it's so much so many amazing things that we're all capable of doing even if we work together i think that's the key point is being able to have some sense of togetherness i'm learning so much just watching the the hip-hop rap culture i'm re i've re-fallen in love with it through rappers like 
currency, Larry June, Freddie Gibbs, just the camaraderie, the way that they share information and share content with each other. And that, you know, they all eating, they're all working together. And that's a beautiful thing. That's why they're able to be successful. They have that network. It's going to take more than just one person to get you that million dollars, my guys. I promise you, just more than just you. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> Big sex, no cap. <laughs> so what's our schedule for this week? Uh we will be streaming today, tomorrow, and Thursday. All right, we guys. Got two today. shows. Two shows lined up after this one. And that will cap off the week. That's amazing. So you guys can find us on Instagram at the No Fly Zone Podcast. Um, you can find us on YouTube at the No Fly Zone Podcast. And make sure that you follow Jameer. Drop your tags. Uh, I am at Misery0704. You can also find me on at Shop Simply Sue or my website, www.shopsimplysue.com. There you go. You can go ahead and find me at uh, Border City TV on the Facebook, Border City TV on the YouTube. Make sure, once again, you follow the No Fly Zone podcast on YouTube <clears throat> and uh, I, I Instagram, I believe. Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, Instagram. Yes. And, uh, yeah, there you go. All right, Border City TV on all streaming platforms. <laughs> and you on all streaming platforms. Yes, I have a really quick shout out. I want to give a shout out to Orange Ice, the band. Uh, we sold out the Four Cyber Cafe in Richmond, Virginia yesterday. So special shout out to those young men all under the age of 25, rocking out some live instruments on stage. I love it. I love it. So big shout out to them. Follow them on Instagram at Orange Ice Music. Orange ice music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, Jameer, I'm all up out of here. You go. all up out of here? So I'm all up out of here. Shout out to man, all y'all that didn't watch, all y'all that's currently watching, that didn't watch, you know what I'm saying? That's in the future gonna watch, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you all <laughs> follow, like, share the broadcast on the YouTube, you know what I'm saying? The support is a new channel, you know what I'm saying? So all the support is much appreciated. If need it, um, like you say, if you got a business, you want your business spotlighted, <clears throat> go ahead and put it in the DMs. Put it in the DM um, on Instagram if you want your business to be highlighted in a small product alert. If you would like to get some promotional content or for us to drop your tag during the No Fly Zone podcast or on our social media, you can definitely DM the No Fly Zone podcast on Instagram. There you go. And uh, the episode two. For the No Fly Zone podcast, man, we're going to go ahead and be out of here until next time. Get this tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Around 8 ish. I'm going to throw the black people thing. Make sure I shout around. out Trick Trick. I just found out who yeah. he was yesterday. Yeah, shout out to Trick Trick. I just found out who he was yesterday. The inspiration <laughs> for I'm... the No Fly Zone, you know what I'm saying? Detroit 313. Shout out for Trick Trick. <laughs> there you go. All right, man. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs>